Brush out ideas, ask questions from the floor. We do have a sign up sheet in the back where you can sign up to speak for the open forum. We will do that at the end of the agenda. Every speaker has two minutes to speak, and then the board can address it at that time, or we will get in touch with you with your answer. Um, are there any questions about that? Now, for those that don't know, it's Mr. Gardner down at the end does the speech at Veterans Day parks and he always points out where the bathrooms are. So I'm going to do that too. And they are down this hallway here if you're not familiar with the Country Club. So without further ado, let's get started with me. All right. It's time for the Secretary's report for the annual meeting minutes in this event. Are we going to do the final call together? Okay. All right. I'm going to do. Um, I need a motion to approve last year's minutes. Can I have a motion, please? And All in favor. That passes. We're on to the treasurer's report. And then for those that don't know, in the back of the room, this gentleman and this nice lady that has been sitting there, those are our auditors. Every year, the association is audited privately by this company that comes in and looks at our books and does it, and does it for us. So this is Erin. She will introduce herself, and she is our auditor. In the pamphlets that you guys received at the front, about midway through are the issued financial statements um, from the audit that we just did for the most recent year. So I'm just going to give some really high level comments on those financial statement results. Um, so midway through your book, starting on what's number page three. Um, overall, for the year ended uh, April 30th, 2021, the total assets were up about 760,000, which is mostly due to improved cash and investments. The liabilities were up about 290,000, which is mostly due to assessments that were received before year end that are counted after year end. Um, revenues were up overall about $250,000. Um, total expenses were down about $450,000. And so there was um, an increase. There was uh, more revenues brought in than expenses for the most recent year. Um, the excess was about four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. The only other thing I really wanted to point out is that the cash position at year end is very strong. Um, the cash being brought in from operating activities is, is in a very strong position. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. President Dennis Brown, you have the president address. To the association. Assistance to helping 
beautify the grounds that are enjoyed by residents and visitors alike. Getting involved helps our residents see how your resources are being used to better our ever growing community. More involvement from you, the members that make up the association, people better representation. Each year we have less and less people running for the board positions. Our expanding community can use your involvement to strive and survive. Please take the initiative and commit to directing. Helping to strengthen our community. The rewards are great as for an individual and for Fairfield. In closing, I would like to thank our fellow board members, EOH staff, and all the committee volunteers for everything that they do and have done to continue to make this a great place to live and to live. All right, so if you're looking at an agenda, it says that I'm going to close the voting right now, but that is not true. We're not closing the voting and calling for the last ballots until 1030, so there's about 15 more minutes. So we're going to move that section of it. Um, we're going to move on to committee introductions, and so that you're aware, on this table over here, there is a list of every committee we have. There is a sign-up sheet. If you are interested in that committee, please put your name down because we will pick those up and we'll be able to sign committees, um, which I believe we're going to do next Thursday. So we will be able to do that. We appreciate people volunteering and helping out and getting more involved in the committee. <laughs> um, that being said, so this is a time of year that we do annual updates on all of our committees. And every committee has a board member that is its liaison or chair. So with that, we're going to go through the individual committees and they're going to give an annual report. So first on that list is Shane Gwynn and he is the Greens Committee. The Greens Committee meets monthly to receive projections from the golf course superintendent and the golf operations manager of upcoming activities. The committee may make recommendations to the board in regard to all aspects of improvement of the Fairfield Golf Course Amendment. Golf improvements for 2020-2021. Under the guidance of our golf course superintendent, Jason Quarles, our golf operations manager, Julian Van Horn, players have experienced much improved course conditions and enhanced customer experience this year. The golf course maintenance crew has put a tremendous amount of work into the transformation of the course. The health of our golf course greens has been a primary goal. Trees have been removed to increase ventilation on the greens. Areas holding water and causing erosion are being addressed. On the course, new leased equipment is allowing crew members to work with increased efficiency. <clears throat> course traffic is being
that one has three pickleball courts along with a regulation basketball court with two goals. The beach received much needed attention as well with the replacement of the wall to the right of the pavilion. Our biggest project was the improvement to the playground <clears throat> with a generous donation from the American Legion of a wheelchair swing. We knew we had to go to the current playground to be more accessible to those with disabilities. This said, a concrete walkway was poured as well as some drainage work done to help with runoff. With several new playground equipment additions, new mulch and cleaning, the playground looks almost brand new. In the spring, we'll be doing more landscaping to put some bug repelling plants and some kids safe flowers to spruce things up. As 2021 begins and the CDC relaxed guidelines, we are able to open the facilities on time. The Recreation Committee, in part with <clears throat> excuse me, Community Relations, was able to host a very successful 4th of July weekend. As of now, we have a wonderful season with no major issues. The committee has several fun and exciting events coming up for the fall season, so please be, look, please be on the lookout for those dates. As always, the committee is looking for volunteers to help out with the various events, so please either sign up today at the annual meeting or reach out to the POA office for more information. Okay, thank you. Ms. Decker, you are community relations as well, so you have another report. <laughs> I really don't enjoy hearing myself talk in my Yankee accent, but I seem to have a lot going on today. Okay, community relations. The main focus of this committee is community relations, just as it reads. The committee tries to plan events for the community so that we can connect and engage with each other. This year has been especially hard to do with all the COVID restrictions, but we managed to pull it off. Highlights as always is 4th of July, and this year did not disappoint. I hope you all share my feelings. The committee has also brought in some live music, which has been great, and we hope to do more, we hope to do more soon. We are always to the we're always trying to think of new ideas and events, and I hope we have more community involvement in this committee. If you like fun and planning events and working on them to completion, I invite you to sign up for Community Relations Committee. We will welcome you. Having said that, I would like to thank my long-term committee members for the dedication and hard work that they have put into planning our events. I hope to I hope the future looks brighter for all of us here at Fairfield. The committee members currently has Terry Jinks, Angie and John Lester, Christina Hangler, and Linda Chirut. Um, Charette, pardon me. But also the other groups that have always supported our events is um, SPA, Southern Protection Agency, Fairfield Fire Department, Federal of Geminis of Dockside Marina and Country Club, and the Fairfield Golf and Pro Shop. Thank you for everything that you do for the community. We appreciate you. That's it. Okay. So now we're going to talk about committees that are building uh, grounds and facilities. And unfortunately, I have to say it's better. <laughs> we have to go again as roads and maintenance. Okay. Um, roads and maintenance. Resurfacing of Lakeview Parkway from the west main gate south to the intersection with Monticello Drive on the east and began in 2010 and was completed in 2011. This needed improvement to Lakeview did not come without creating unintended consequences, namely two inches of additional drop off on the road shoulders in many locations. After 10 to 11 years, some intersections of Lakeview are beginning to deteriorate. Rather than add an additional two inches of asphalt and exasperate the existing shoulder problem, it was determined that the best solution would be to remove mill two inches of existing asphalt to the deteriorated sections and replace with two inches of new asphalt, thereby maintaining the same shoulder height. The result is equivalent to resurfacing 3.1 miles um, of one lane. In addition to mill and replace, East Foster Court, South Pinewood Court were resurfaced. Also, Carroll County Water Authority made numerous water and sewer line connections which were filled in with asphalt by the paving crew. Additional patchwork will occur this fall. 
Please be aware that as new homes were built, there will be additional water and sewer line connections that will leave sections of our roads filled with dirt and gravel. This sections must be allowed to pack down and settle before they can be filled with asphalt. Your patience is requested during this settling period. The Fairfield Maintenance Department will endeavor to maintain these by periodically adding dirt and gravel until they are sufficiently packed and ready for new asphalt. The maintenance of the three main evacuation routes, Lakeview Parkway, Monticello Drive, and Tall Pine will be ongoing. However, based on budgetary constraints, we intend to continue resurfacing secondary roadways as well in the future. It is our intention to restrike the center line on Terra Drive and the south loop of Lakeview Parkway this fall. Fairfield maintenance groups will oversee restriking since the maintenance department is currently shorthanded. Along with the continuing afternoon showers, a date for this work is determined at this time. We will notify the community when this work is scheduled. Roads and Maintenance Committee are as such. Jim Stevenson, the chairman, Travis Jackson, Alex Dombrowski, John Watson, John, pa John Poggleton, Lee Belouche, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I just said that wrong, and Bob Endicott. All right, before I go on to the next committee, it is 1026. So if you have not voted, please do so because we're going to close voting in four minutes. Okay, our next committee is Lakes and Vans, and that is Barry Barber. First, I want to say I'm not 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've got four minutes. I have to pull this thing off. <laughs> the Lakes and Vans okay. Committee is, uh, consists of myself as Lady John, uh, Dory Stevens as the chairperson, Sean Olowski, Richard Corey, Tom Hall, Daryl Ray, Pat Domain, and Richard Huss. Uh, these guys are just fantastic, dedicated people that really take the interest of the lakes at heart. Uh, the committee works with the board liaison to create Lakes and Dams annual budget. The big thing has been monitoring and putting the projects together for the additional docks and slopes at the marina. As you know, Dock A and B have been completed. C and D is laying out there in the parking lot, so it's eventually coming. I was beginning to think this was the Corps of Engineer project. This thing has taken forever, but the end is in sight, so we're going to get there. They've also worked with the administration to improve buoy placement, safety, and enforcement of rules on the lake. Uh, they conduct reviews of watercraft pre inspection requests in conjunction with the compliance officer for post inspection. This is primarily both safety, make sure that the proper safety equipment, light vests, lights, horns, things like this are on the boats. They do look at both length and both weight, so it's in conformance with our regulations, so we don't manage the sea water. <coughs> They're also very committed to overseeing the water testing, overall lake health, to include fish status. And there's some people on the committee that know every fish out there by the first name. They are unbelievable when it comes to telling me the type of fish that are in place and what they're supposed to eat, who eats who. Anyway, they advise the property control committee on seawall and dock construction and, uh, and look at all the applications for docks. Uh, the main concern has been safety. They're working with SPA to make sure that the lake patrol officers are knowledgeable of all lake rules regulations and SPA has been instructed to strictly enforce lake and watercraft safety regulations. So again, this is a very active committee. Sign-up sheet is over there. If you're interested in any way what goes on at the lakes, I invite you to join the Lakes and Dance Committee. Thank you. It's only 1028, so we have time for Shane Gwen to be Property Control Committee. Uh, Property Control Committee is uh, made up of myself, uh, board member Maureen Walsh, uh, committee members Jackie Congleton, Jim Hannon, Bill Hines, Sherry Palermo, and Floyd Weaver. Uh, the Property Control Committee is charged by the Declaration of Restrictions and Bylaws with oversight of the development of all residential lots. The committee has the authority to review approve or deny requests from owners in good standing and in compliance for additions and or modifications to lots and residences as dictated by the governing documents. The committee may grant, grant variances with regard to owner requests and enforce community rules and regulations through the issuance of fines. 
The property control committees may recommend changes to the construction manual and other rules and regulations and present these to the board for approval. This past year, like many Americans, the property control committee faced challenges because of the COVID-19 virus. Many began the year holding meetings uh, virtually through Zoom, but we're fortunate enough to be able to transition to in-person meetings halfway through the year. The committee has worked closely with builders and residents through supply shortages and labor crisis induced by the pandemic. Throughout the pandemic, the committee was able to revamp the rules and regulations and to update and modify many rules for the benefit of all residents. Now, I, I have statistics here, and if you haven't grabbed a committee report over there on the table, you can take a look at some of the statistics. But, um, this shows the, the number of applications reviewed by the committee, and there's significantly more applications in 2021 compared to 2020. Um, so I need to hurry. No, you're good. Um, We're not going to cut you off. <laughs> um, for instance, new construction, there are 34 applications in 2021 as opposed to 12 in uh, 2020. Um, minor construction was 151. Uh, compared to 78. Um, and then there's numbers for, for all different categories. Like I said, you can grab a report over there if you're interested. And I believe Allison's also going to make these statistics available online after the meeting. Um, there's a violation report for uh, 2021. Since last September, there's been over 1,774. Uh, Violation notes to send out on property control. And uh, if you get, grab a report here, it breaks it down by category so you can see common, uh, common areas of violations. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, that page. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the property control committee continues to assist property owners in complying with our governing documents. While owners are performing new construction, addition, repairs, and maintenance of the exterior of their homes and property, the committee strives to make consistent decisions while balancing individual rights and the property values in the association. The committee's goal is to keep the community attractive and maintain the values. Thank you. It is 10.32, so I'm going to close the voting and ask for the auditor's ballot. So voting is closed. Right. And we can go back to giving committee reports. So we have committee grounds and announcement. And although the liaison this morning, she is not here today, so we're going to hear again from Tiffany Becker. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is last night, so um, the duties for community grounds and enhancements is recommend the board activities that will enhance the aesthetics of the association's common areas and exteriors of amenities. The committee will assist with landscaping and maintenance of common areas and entrances. Meeting times vary. They meet in the spring and the fall, planting for entrances and seasonal decorating at the gates. Several projects may also create meeting opportunities. One of our special projects this year was the planning, um, excuse me, was provided planning, oversight, and placement of the landscaping at the West Gate Fire Department grounds. Examples of responsibilities coordinate spring and fall planting at the gates and clubs. Each member is typically assigned an area to oversee, ensuring irrigation and weed control activities are in place. Decorate the gates and club for the country, uh, excuse me, for the Christmas holidays. Provide input for improvements or needed maintenance at association amenities and common areas. Come join us. We are a fun committee and only meet several times a year. Our meetings are typically outdoors. You can contact Dana Hubbard at her email address if you'd like to join or have any questions about our committee. You can do so by signing up over here. Now we're on to what we consider the planning committees, and the first of those is document management, which is very Gardner. The document management committee's goals are to provide guidelines for governing document 
content, application, preparation, consistency, and maintenance. It sounds like it's a lot of fun. But what we're really trying to do is look at all the documents across Fairfield to make sure they don't conflict. We've looked at situations where one document would say something, someone else, another document would say something quite different. So we, were, we have reviewed every document in Fairfield Plantation, moved stuff around, and made recommendations back to the appropriate committees to put the right thing in the right document. That's what we started out doing. We worked our way through that with these three goals. Maintain continuity, applicability of government <laughs> documents, provide consistency of information in documents, and ensure compliance by document review process. Like I said, we reviewed all, all the documents. The committee's quite small. I'm the chair. The members are Tom Ishii, Paul Soddy, and Les Hoffman. So the three of us, I don't consider myself a worker, uh, have really put a lot into it and we reviewed again every document. Our challenge since 2017 has been a declaration of restrictions. We have gone over this thing, we've changed it, we've coordinated with lawyers in downtown Atlanta, we've coordinated with the state, and we put a document together that I hope will be Fairfield into the, this century. The current document is 50 years old, as you've heard me say, forever. Uh, it is currently out now for the third time for community to vote. Here's hoping that we get a positive vote and we get the new document in place. Uh, we will we'll hopefully then, after we get that done, get back to our original mission, which is to ensure the continuity and consistency of Fairfield documents. If you're interested in joining us, sign up sheet is over there. We could use a few more people. It would make our discussions last a little longer and probably be more varied. So you're welcome to join document now. All right, thank you. Strategic planning is also Mr. Gardner. Strategic plan, planning committee is to recommend to the board strategies, objectives, and prepare a master plan for future improvements to the association's infrastructure and assets in the form of a five-year strategic master plan. This sounds like a, a, a daunting task. Uh, Dr. Bob Pinkney and I started this thing a long time ago. And we, we got down the trail, and then between COVID and a few other things, we got off the trail. We're going to try to get back on the trail now. Uh, after two years hiatus due to COVID-19, we're ready to restart the process. Uh, right now, the, the committee is essentially blank. I'm still the liaison. I will be the chair of that committee once we get it reformed. The idea is to get some kind of a document in place so that boards know what is expected in the future. So we don't change things every year as the board changes. The only way to get things done is to put out a master plan budget and plan to achieve an objective and stay on course unless something really drastic comes up. It's not to say we can't change, but it would take a majority of the board members to change it. The idea is to plan rather than jerk. And essentially we've been doing this forever. So this strategic five-year plan is needed and it's a rolling plan. You will, we have the current budget as the beginning plan four years out. As we move to that plan, we've been put another year out there. And you keep moving along as you accumulate money, you get more projects or you revise projects as you go, but hopefully you stay on a steady course. So we need a five-year plan for Fairfield. If you're interested in strategic planning, there's the list. It's blank. Put some names on there because I need company. Thank you. All right, thank you. So the lot management is Don Harmon. Yeah, can we do it? <laughs> <laughs> Now, <laughs> really, a uh, uh, purpose of lot management is for we own a lot of lots that our PLA owns, which is we want to market them, sell them, and have the right prices put on them. There's 12 lot management members, and uh, that is our main goal and what we're trying to accomplish. Also, uh, as we sell these plots, we, the board has decided that we can set that money aside and use it for the recreation center, which will turn capital we don't want into capital we really need. So I'd like to thank all 12 of them. And John Collington is the chair, and he's done some really good work on uh, mapping these plots out. and. Uh, Putting a, a, a ratio study on them to decide their work. 
I'd also like to give an explanation to how it's a community. Uh, it's not common for a general manager to have to do all she does with lots. Uh, but she's going above and beyond the call of duty. And uh, she also has a real estate license, but she don't get paid to sell, <laughs> just like all my uh, lot managers. Real estate, they don't get paid to sell. So it's, it's a group effort, and that is our main goal is to turn these lots. We unfortunately have to take back, or we're just given back, and let's put that money into something more useful like the recreation center. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we have uh, Mr. Budget and Finance, which is also Mr. Arman. Budget and finance meets partially uh, once several times once a year because we have to establish our budget every year. I'd like to thank Tom Issue, Bill Hines, Lloyd uh, Moe, uh, Sherry Russell, and uh, John Watson. That's one of my number two. Our goal is to you know, have to set a budget. And it's mostly looking at the capital improvement that we will accomplish for that year. Sometimes things that we want to cancel, keep being reasonable for, that's what we work on. Also, you know, my hat's off to Allison uh, because she and Mary Ann over to my back there both do a lot of work in setting up the foundation, you know. Budget the finance has a foundation that we have to have so many employees, so much of this and so much of that, which is, you know, this common operating procedure. And the rest is looked at as capital improvement of what the residents may want and so forth and so on. And we put what we can put in there and the rest is sometimes happens. All right, we have the public safety committees, uh, which are community control and fire safety, and those are opposed, Mr. Brown. Uh, community control committee meets on a monthly basis to discuss matters that can improve and enhance the safety of our community. Rule enforcement, traffic enforcement, and traffic science. The committee also holds hearings for citation appeals related to security enforcement. The committee re reviewed the appeals of 75 citations this year. Appeals were both written and in person. Appeal brings the traffic violations, late use violations, animal complaints, the criminal offenses. It can be difficult challenge for the committee to hear and rule on many appeals, but the members of the committee are dedicated to the community and handle the challenge with an open mind and with all fairness to those involved. The committee has made uh, recommendations to the board of directors and to other committees to enhance the safety of our community. Spano Security is our contract security company. They are responsible for enforcing Fairfield plantation rules, including the use of roads, lakes, and amenities. The staff, both gates, oh, they staff both gates and are control our community's 24 hour day, seven days a week. They also provide enforcement on our lakes. Spa security assists the Care County Sheriff's Office and the Fairfield Fire Department. They investigate incidents with not, with not get attention from local law enforcement. For the first eight months of 2021, the spot has responded to 99 alarms, 56 animal complaints, 18 damage to property, 26 disorderly conduct, 26 juvenile complaints, 49 motorist assists, two burglaries, 14 steps, 42 traffic accidents, 81 traffic complaints, 48 trespassing. They issued 156 citations and patrol and 51 
citations by the lake. It's just another portion of the services Bob has provided to our community. This is a big one right here. Um, this paragraph I'm going to read right here. Property owners are reminded that in all emergencies, they call 911 first. Let me read that again. Property owners are reminded in all emergency situations to call 911 first. Calling anyone else will delay the emergency services response. After notifying the 911 dispatcher, you should then call the spa security so they may also assist in the <laughs> situation. I would like to recognize and thank the members of the uh, Committee for, for volunteering their services to the community. Chairman Paul Sanford, Secretary Patricia Smith, Members Mark Tangio, Angie Lester, Stephen Rubin, Mike Russo, Lee Sunberg, Carlos Underwood, Board Liaisons, Dennis Brown, and Nick Boyd. I'll just keep it on. Yes, to fire safety. Many people are unaware that Fairfield uh, Plantation has its own fire district and operates under compliance with the state of Georgia. We also have our own fire class rate, which is ISO 3, which is separate from Carroll County. The plantation is a combination department, which means they employ both volunteers and career firefighters. We have 25 firefighters on the roster, with 15 being volunteers and 10 being paid. With the 10 paid volunteers, or paid firefighters, that are employed for our full time. And the other six are on call 24 hours or shift as needed. We have two lieutenants, both lieutenants are nationally certified fire officers. We also have a sergeant that is certified firefighter. These officers serve as volunteers. We have one paid captain fire marshal who is also a state certified fire investigator and fire inspector. A deputy chief who is over training and assist the fire chief in the day to day operations. Both the captain and deputy chief are nationally certified fire officer chief. And a fire chief who is the department head and handles all administrative activities and the liaison for FEMA and FEMA and is also a nationally certified fire officer for. Firefighters that are employed and volunteers with Fairfield are highly trained professionals. We are one of the only departments in the state that have volunteer officers that are trained to level by fire officer to volunteers that are certified firefighters. We started an EMT class in January of this year. The class is scheduled to end September 30th. When the EMT class is completed and everyone has tested, we should have had four more nationally certified AMT, uh, AEMTs, which are one step below paramedic. We also have two other members that are going to EMT class and mostly, uh, and two other members that are going to EMT class at a local community college. This will allow fire departments to render more quality medical aid to residents of fire. We hope to start the firefighter routine class along with the emergency responder class by the first of the year. The plantation fire can be an asset to residents. So we are involved in the fire work. The Fourth of July, which we are responsible for shooting the fire. We also install smoke detectors that request the president to our classes, provide fire safety information, and assist in many other ways. It is our mission to strive for the residents of the community to be some of the most qualified and dedicated the fire. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the committee, George. Are the election results ready? Yeah. All right.
No. <laughs> um, the top three in no particular order are Chris May, Bill Hines, John Harmon. Well, congratulations to everyone that was elected, and we always appreciate everyone that volunteers to be a board. Um, normally on this day, the board meets after this meeting and reassigns committees. We are not doing that today. Um, all right, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion. Better, do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do the open forum next if you care to stay. We have a list of those. There are uh, four people signed up to speak. I'm going to call them one by one. They each have two minutes in which to speak. And Mr. Glenn has nicely agreed to use my phone and time that for me so that we can concentrate. All right. Um, the first person on uh, the list wishing to speak is Barbara Volmer, and um, it looks like shrubs and lighting is her second. First of all, I would thank the board for all the work the volunteers and I success. You all doing a great job. My first question is that window over there. We have really two windows in the main dining room. Why are they covered with shrubs? Why can't you sit there and look at it for I've mentioned this for years. That's what it's done. So I would like to see at that window too go out there. Number two, what is going on with the budget in the street lights? I mentioned to Barry there are two corners that are very dark at night and a lot of people and I've agreed with me. And I would like to see. Well, I had a policeman go out one night and list 10 street lights that this corner that he said needed street lights. I would be happy with five. Thank you. Thank you. Our next person that wishes to speak is in New York, it's Robert Lane. Okay. On uh, speeding and street lights. Okay. <laughs> it's speeding. I'm not sure about the second word. <laughs> um, one of the first things that uh, one of the reasons we came here uh, a couple of years ago was to uh, escape the traffic at Northeast College. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, <it's kind> of, <laughs> um, and one of the things that we enjoy is the spa. Uh, being able to control uh, some of the things that uh, that are happening. Well, one of them is uh, just speeding along Lakewood and Parkwood. Um, it, it's just getting out of hand. Um, there's a, a light Mustang, late model Mustang, uh, with megaphone exhaust that just flows by the house. Um, there's also a green motorcycle. Uh, the same thing. Uh, I mean, if he hits 60, 70 miles an hour, by the time he gets up to the, uh, the turn up there on my for the court, uh, I'd be surprised. Uh, so what I've asked for, and the past president uh, indicated that he would uh, uh, do something about that, would either put a speed bump in at Burford Court or a stop sign. So that's what I'm asking for is to slow this thing down. Uh, these people just keep blowing by you. Somebody's going to get hurt. When I pull out, I try to back out of my drive. I get two houses away from uh, uh, back gate. And uh, I've got uh, 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 construction people, delivery people on my butt just as I'm pulling out acting out. Um, there needs to be a little bit more enforcement for that. Uh, 
The other thing is I want to I want to uh, give kudos to this policy. They're uh, uh, doing a good job. <laughs> well, let me stop that. It's not a phone call that was done. I want to give them the kudos as to uh, what they're doing and enforcing some of the things that we I didn't move here, Kathy and I didn't move here uh, just to uh, escape, but it almost became that where. We now enjoy a, a lower pressure area than the Northeast Cobb County. Um, and the last thing is, I have put on Facebook uh, my support for closing out, uh, closing off the back gate to just residents only. And that way we don't have all these trucks and deliveries and everything uh, coming through the back gate. Um, and it would uh, uh, solve some of those problems with the speeding and things like that. So I want to thank you for listening. Uh, my opinion, that's all it is. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One last thing. Um, uh, yeah, the two minutes have right. been up for hey, so at least two minutes. Right. Yeah. So we, um, uh, I'm a, I park in the handicap spot um, for a reason, not just because it's convenient to be able to uh, get in and out of my car. Um, I have to. And I would ask that you increase the uh, number of handicap spots um, so that we can uh, all, all part of There are some of us that really depend on it. Thank you. Thank you. And I didn't mention this at the beginning, but um, Ms. Kennedy is taking some notes, and we do have, as you've heard, different liaisons for different committees, and we will get with those liaisons after the meeting and get the information that you've asked about to them and get back to you. Um, the next person is Alice Dickerson for card access. Yes, I've lived in Fairfield for 15 years. And I had a problem with when it rained, all of my windows down and getting in the gate. I purchased this box from the POA. Can I have a, your hand raised if you'd like to have one of these attached to your car to get you in the gate? I think Ann would like to see that. Um, I believe they're asking the question, how much did the card box cost? It cost at that time $35. Okay. A regular card was $25. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they do, but I have done some research and I have the information to get to the board to, to research it to see if it is feasible, but it is wonderful. Absolutely okay, wait. I, you can't, there are no comments from the audience. You have to direct your questions up here. And she is the speaker. I, I put it on the top part of my left hand side of my windshield. I go to the gate, it opens, and I drive right through. Okay. And here's some information. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And the last speaker that we have signed up to speak is Anita Rice on unification. Yes, it's so familiar. I have um, basically when the builders have built a house around here, they leave a terrible hotel in this. It looks like third world country where they've been with the border party. I know they have to have it. But when they leave, there's mud tracks. I live on the port. It looks disgusting. And it's still like that for a long, long time. So I think it's a There should be some responsibility for the way they leave. I don't want to call you that which has a little island around it and it's nothing but mud and mess. 
So that's it's my previous complaint. Um, the other one I want to say quickly is how many rentals are we allowed to have in I can answer that question. We do not have that restriction. It would be required to be in the declaration of restrictions. The board cannot pass its own rental requirements on its own. It would have to be in the DOR. So you see a lot of people coming in and out that aren't really owners. So the people who are renting to them have quite a few people in the one house. So we don't know who all these people are. So renters are required to register with the office, and we are supposed to be giving get, given a list of who lives here, and we will give out cards accordingly. But you do have to register. You see, I know a rental right near me, and they do use the uh, garage as a bedroom. So they have. If you would like, you can give us the address, and Mr. Kelly or Ms. Kennedy can look into that. Okay. All right, that is the last person we have had that signed up to speak. So, Mr. Brown, we have no other speakers. All right, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Wait, I have something to say. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>